Hello everyone. Today's case is another big question of why can't men just break up with their partners instead of murdering them? Because you think that just breaking up with someone would be easier than going through the process of murdering someone and then going to jail. But again and again, I keep hearing of these cases and today's is no different. This case also captured my attention because there were claims that YouTubers captured the woman's murder, which is an interesting concept in today's day and age with people filming so much. What if someone could solve a crime because they were vlogging? We'll find out in today's case that that may not be true, but it's still a very interesting in concept. 31 year old Laura Wallen was a very well liked social studies teacher at Wild Lake High School in Olney, Maryland. She was so well liked by her students that in 2016 she ended up winning a Teacher of the Year award. One of her students sang that she was known for giving these warm hugs that the students called jellyfish hugs because she would wiggle her arms while hugging you. And Laura's life seemed to be going amazingly. She had a job that she loved, students that she loved to teach, family that loved her, and she was also 14 weeks pregnant with her boyfriend Tyler Tessier's baby. However, in August of 2016, Laura would find out that Tyler was actually two-timing her with another woman and that he was engaged to that woman. On August 28th, Laura would end up sending a text message to this woman asking if they could meet up and talk. The message read, and I quote, it's important that some things are cleared up and I would imagine that if you were in my position, you'd want some answers as well. By no means is this an attempt at confrontation, just looking for an explanation woman to woman, end quote. As anyone would. I actually had this exact situation happen with me and my ex. He was actually two times timing me with his ex-girlfriend that he got back together with. So me and this other girl who I will not be naming because she is an amazing, lovely person. We're essentially both dating him at the same time, but neither of us knew. And then when him and I broke up, she found out and then she ended up messaging me and she obviously broke up with him as well. But it was this weird like love triangle that he created for no reason when either of us would have happily been like, you know what? <laughs> no, thank you. So I can understand Laura wanting to talk to this woman because me and the other woman in my situation also did the same thing. You know, we went over everything and we realized that there was so much overlap, like months of overlap where he would literally send the same text message to both of us. Like it was wild. And in the end, it just made so much sense why he was acting certain ways when he was with me. And then when he was acting certain ways when he was with her. And it was because he was seeing both of us. So I think Laura did the right thing in the situation, wanting to talk woman to woman with this other woman. Because if I was this other woman that was engaged to Tyler, I would want to know that he was doing all of this and I would not want to be with him. I would definitely want to know before we ended up getting married and things got even more serious. But this unfortunately may have set Tyler off because September 2nd would be the last day that Laura Wallen would ever be seen alive again. On this day, Laura would end up being captured with Tyler on surveillance footage at a Safeway grocery store in Olney, and her last known debit purchase was also at the same grocery store. Later that night, Laura would end up sending her sister a text saying that Tyler was taking her on an adventure through a field in the rural area of Damascus. Laura's sister ended up telling her to send her a picture, which she ended up doing, and this photo of this rural area was sent along with a text message that read, and I quote, Tyler has me on an adventure in the country. Not sure why, but it's for something waiting in a field, end quote. The very next day, Laura would be missing and she would be reported very quickly after she did not show up to work because she was a very dedicated teacher, as we heard. Her father, Mark, saying that Laura had actually been super excited for the start of the new school year. And again, she was an amazing teacher. It's not like she just would not show up and not tell anyone. And to make matters worse, Laura had been in contact with her sister telling her that she had been taken to this rural area. She didn't know why. And she was also 14 weeks pregnant. Laura's family and friends would end up going on the news begging for anyone to help them find their loved one. Tyler would also be present during these news conferences. And it would turn out that Tyler had actually known her for 10 years. So it's not like this was just a new relationship that she had gotten into and they had accidentally gotten pregnant. She had known this man for a decade is someone that she clearly felt comfortable with if he was taking her to the rural random fields and she was also having his baby but she had found out that he was cheating on her and clearly that was not a good sign but let me tell you tyler had some audacity because he was at this news conference and he was captured on camera crying. He was captured walking with Laura's family, comforting her family. He even held Laura's mother's hand. And this entire time that Laura's mother was holding his hand, Tyler was the main person of interest. And the police thought he was most likely involved with Laura's disappearance. And the family knew that. So just imagine how hard that had to be to pretend like everything was okay. And to just sit there and have to hold the hand of the man who everyone thinks did something to your daughter. That's just absolutely horrific and I can't believe the family had to go through that. So I'm gonna play some footage for you now. We haven't slept, we haven't eaten, we're just looking, we're praying. 
that you're safe. So many people, so many people that miss you. You put the suspect in front of a camera because he's going to talk and he may inadvertently say something or present something in a way that you know is not true. Police would end up discovering Laura's 2011 Black Ford Escape parked in an apartment complex that was almost directly across the highway from the school that she worked at. Now, some really sketchy things would happen in the days after Laura went missing. Late on September 3rd, Tyler did something sketchy. He would end up texting a friend asking for a ride to Baltimore, saying that he needed help cleaning up a mess. But this acquaintance thankfully declined to help him, as he should. If anyone asks you to do something sketchy, as much as you may love them or be friends with them. Take a moment to think about what they may have done. Take a moment to think about your own future and the repercussions that it may cause you on top of the fact of just how immoral that is. The next day on September 4th, the family would end up receiving text messages from Laura's cell phone. Police say Laura's sister got several suspicious text messages from Laura's phone. I am like 95% sure Tyler is not the father. I am gonna try and get a hold of Antoine. But her sister says Laura hadn't spoken with her ex-boyfriend Antoine in two years, and that his name was spelled incorrectly. Certainly, uh, Laura knew how to spell the name and uh, the text spelled the name wrong. This is when Tyler would also speak to the police and his story was, well, it was sketchy. First, Tyler claimed that Laura and himself had an argument at her home, which ended in her hysterically crying. His story, of course, would change, however, and he would then start saying that he and Laura had actually been kidnapped by a group of African-American men who forced them to drive to a paddock where Laura was then shot. Tyler would end up eventually claiming that him and Laura had gotten into an argument on a porch where she charged at him with scissors, so he then struck her in the head with a wooden post, which in my opinion is giving very much Chris Watts vibes, where Chris ended up saying that his wife was the one that killed the children, so then he had to kill her. Essentially, Tyler is saying that he was forced to hit her and kill her essentially because she charged it at him with scissors. Like what? He then told investigators that he went to bury Laura's body because I guess he panicked, but then he thought that he might be burying her alive. So he ended up shooting her in the head so that she wouldn't suffer. It's just ridiculous. On September 13th of 2017, which was just nine days after Laura had gone missing, police would end up at a farm in Damascus. This turns out to be a property that Tyler had taken several trips to recently, and it was owned by an acquaintance of his that I'd never seen named. The photo that Laura had sent her sister also matched this area. So in a sense it was a really good thing that her sister ended up telling her to take a photo and send it to her. Detectives would end up coming upon freshly dug ground on a secluded area of the farm and cadaver dogs would also hit at this area. There in a shallow grave, police would end up discovering Laura Wallen's body. Autopsy would reveal that Laura had been shot in the back of the head. Toxicology would also show that she had no drugs or alcohol in her system. And unsurprisingly, Tyler would be arrested and charged with first degree murder. Howard County Public School System issuing a statement reading, and I quote, it is with a heavy heart that we share the news that Wild Lake High School teacher, Miss Laura Wallen was found deceased tonight by Montgomery County police. Please keep Miss Wallen's family in your thoughts, end quote. So Tyler is now in jail for the murder of his pregnant girlfriend, which he could have just broken up with. He was also at this point being charged with obstruction of justice, tampering with evidence and making false statements. He would also allegedly admit during interrogation that he was the one that sent the text messages to Laura's family from her phone. He also allegedly admitted to driving her vehicle to the apartment complex where it was later found. And he also said that he disposed of her license plate as well as her cell phone in a dumpster. Staff at the complex would later end up finding both of these items in a dumpster. Now here's where this case got even crazier and it reminds me a lot of the Alexis Sharkey case. Around a year later on September 6th of 2018, just hours before opening statements were scheduled to start in Tyler's trial, he would be found dead inside of his jail cell where he had unalived himself. And this reminds me a lot of the Alexis Sharkey case because her husband ended up doing the exact same thing when police went to get him. How much of a coward do you have to be to not only not be able to break up with someone that you've been in two timing, but then to also unalive yourself when you have to face the repercussions from that. It's like he couldn't face any repercussions from anything. Confrontation was just too much for him apparently because he couldn't break up with her like a real man, stand up and just break up with her or not even two time her to begin with. And then he couldn't even face the music when it came to having to go to prison for what he did. I just really don't understand how some people turn out this way. And it really makes me curious of the psychology behind that. Laura's father would end up saying, and I quote, we were robbed of the trial. End quote. Now, as I said in the beginning, there was some talk about some YouTubers being involved in this case. And in the midst of all of this, 
two groups of YouTubers ended up claiming to have captured a woman's murder on camera. Sam and Colby and another group called Ireland Boys Productions are both known for doing these kind of haunted exploration videos on YouTube, some of which I have seen. And on this particular day, they were actually filming at an area called the Forest Haven Insane Asylum in Laurel, Maryland. And they ended up capturing while they were vlogging there what sounded like a woman screaming in the middle of the night. Somebody's legit crying for help right now. Run. Whoa. There's a helicopter and a half search light. And I will say, it does sound terrifying what they captured, and it does sound like a woman, something happening to her. However, both of these groups would end up putting out videos on their separate channels um, in the title saying that they ended up capturing the screaming. And then eventually after, the Ireland Boys Productions would end up putting out a video titled We Witnessed Murder. And they claimed specifically in this video to have captured Laura Wallen's murder on camera. Now this ended up getting a lot of traction because their videos get millions of views. I think this video particularly got about 1.7 million views when I looked at it, but it would turn out that it definitely was not Laura's murder that they captured on camera. It was actually impossible that they captured Laura's murder. And that is by the straight fact that Laura's murder happened an hour away in Damascus, about 40 miles away from where they were filming. So it is impossible that they captured captured her specifically screaming from 40 miles away. You can't capture that. And if they had taken two minutes to do a quick Google search about Laura's case at all, they would have found out that it would have been impossible for them to capture that. And as far as I've seen, the police never mentioned that they thought Laura was murdered over in Laurel Hill and then, you know, was taken to Damascus. So it's not like it's possible at all for this to have happened. Now, I'm not saying that they did this with malintent because there's definitely the possibility that they did this just to get clicks and views because oh, getting millions of views like this racks up a lot of money in YouTube AdSense, it, it does. But at the same time, I wanna play devil's advocate and I wonder if this was just incompetence. They just didn't take the time to do their research and they just, threw it out there. But then I did see a lot of Laura's family and friends had commented on this specific video, calling them out on this, saying that this was disrespectful and that it was not, you know, even possible for them to have captured Laura's murder, you know, accusing them of doing it for the clicks basically. And so you would think if they did see this, they would take the video down then if it was so disrespectful as it seems to be, but they have not. So I don't know. Let me know how you feel about that. In my opinion, it does sound like they captured something very scary. It does sound like they captured a woman screaming. So I think there is a possibility they could have captured some other domestic dispute happening nearby in the area, but it wasn't Laura. So I don't think Laura's name should be linked to that video. And honestly, the whole reason I found this case was because of their videos. I had truly thought that they had captured her murder. And I thought that was such a crazy concept of, you know, people nowadays, especially YouTubers, filming so much of their day and their times and going to areas when you're doing this urban exploring where people wouldn't normally have cameras as often. So the idea of capturing something like someone's murder on camera and it being able to help police I think is a very interesting concept, but unfortunately that isn't it in this case. It's just the false allegation that's online because of these videos that were put out. So I did wanna just clear that up for anyone who may be confused. Again, a lot of the family and friends were upset by this and it's just straight out untrue and it's been debunked now. But what do you all think about the endless amount of crimes like this happening? It's like every other day a woman is being murdered by a man that she trusted, that she loved enough to conceive a child with, but he secretly has someone else on the side. Again, I can't wrap my head around this logic of murder being a better option than just breaking up with someone. Like how is going to jail better than just going and living your life like, away from that person? Now, there's the option to write your parental rights away. So if you didn't wanna have this child, you could do the deadbeat dad thing and just go away and like move somewhere else or just not interact with this person anymore. I guess there is no logic and that is the issue. But let's have a discussion about this down below. My heart goes out to Laura's family and friends and this whole mess that Tyler caused and then couldn't even face the music for. It's just ridiculous. But if you have any cases that you want me to look into, let me know down below and I hope you all stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video. Bye.